Hey, this is John Johnson, and I just finished the book, Victor Frankl's A Man's Search for Meaning. This book, uh, honestly, I had to put it in one of my top fives, uh, just because it is an amazing book. Um, many books that are about meaning to life and purpose and all that type of stuff, is just people telling you their opinions and feelings on it, um, which is nice, but this author spent 75% of time detailing his time in a Nazi uh, concentration camps in World War II. And being a trained psychiatrist, even though he couldn't be completely objective because he was being subjected to it as well, uh, he was able to detail his time in the camps and how people were able to find meaning and purpose uh, throughout the camps. Uh, so for me, this was an amazing book just because for someone to be able to find purpose and survive in last year's amount of time in, in the, that that type of situation, um, then with my plush, good, amazing life, um, I should always be able to be happy, in my opinion. Uh, so a couple things I got from the book. Uh, I'm glad that he mentioned that uh, uh, science textbooks can't always tell you, you know, what the extent of human, uh, what the human body is capable of. Uh, for example, uh, brushing your teeth every single day. He said that uh, even though people weren't brushing their teeth anymore, but since they were fasting so much and not eating a ton, their gums became healthier than they've ever been. So uh, that was something crazy to hear about was that extent. Uh, it was one story he, he spoke about how you know, the camps broke down everybody, that there was an extremely brave man. And uh, when his uh, feet got so swollen to where he couldn't put his shoes on anymore and he had to walk barefoot in the snow, in the cold, and he just hearing the man like wailing in tears, uh, that type of pain and punishment and suffering is something that I don't think I'll ever see in my lifetime or feel in my lifetime. So. Always understand that, for at least for me personally, that there's someone out there that's had it worse than me, uh, keeps my life in perspective. Um, a lot of the men got through the situation through apathy. Uh, the longer they're in the camps, the more they had to just become stone cold uh, towards a lot of different things, uh, which is makes sense to me. Uh, the more suffering and the more pain someone goes through. And I've even seen it in you know many other books I've read and even in my own personal life, uh, just get hard, cold, stone cold, apathetic uh, to be able to survive those, uh, those types of situations. Yeah, that was another crazy story. Like that, that mental mind state is much more important than people give it credit for, even the people who know that it has, you know, worth. Uh, one guy, they, they, the people were, some camps were starting to get liberated and they were hearing that the camp where he was at could potentially get liberated soon. And one guy put in his mind that he was going to be freed before March 30th. Well, March 30th came and they still weren't freed. And the guy had a sickness the very next day and died. And this is not, you know, fairy tale type of stuff, something that you would read in some, you know, fiction book. This is real life, what actually happened, uh, which is crazy to me. Um, he also mentioned that uh, the question, why am I suffering, is the wrong question. Uh, this leads to you having an expectation for life. Uh, the better question is, what does life expect from me? Uh, this gives no expectation for life and allows people to have a purpose in the most grim circumstances. Um, and the, the purpose that people find, it's either got to come from some unfinished work or for some responsibility, love or care for some loved one uh, in the future. And that's how everybody got through it. Uh, some people were you know, authors or scientists, et cetera, and they had some papers or, or some unfinished work that they wanted to finish. And, and that got them through because they really wanted to be able to help out the society by doing that. Uh, and then there's other people who had loved ones that they feel like they could be able to help take care of, care, et cetera. 
that that that's what their hope was in. So it ha it had to be in some sort of purpose, societal purpose, uh, outside of themselves, and that's what got people through those very tough times. Uh, one last point uh, that I saw in here was uh, him talking about sadists, which are people who take pleasure in um, inflicting pain, and that it was the people that were promoted from being prisoners to being guards who oftentimes inflicted the most punishment on the same people that they were just being prisoners with. Uh, and that, you know, the actual guards who were never prisoners inflicted much less punishment. Uh, but he states that some people are just sadistic. They get that pleasure from inflicting plain pain on other people. And this is not a ton of people, but that became an interesting concept for me to where I had to actually put the book down for a little while and, and research that concept some to understand why, how do people get to that point in their lives to where, uh, to where they actually gain pleasure from inflicting pain. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, great book. Um, having long-term goals versus short-term goals is uh, another very important point. Um, you know, they said that they knew somebody's time was done, that they only had 24 to 48 hours to live when they didn't get up from their cot in the morning to work, even though they had the strength to do it. And then they will pop out a cigarette. And there were certain things that were considered high value in camps. Uh, cigarettes were high value, but it's short term gain. And uh, food rations, like an extra piece of bread was considered high value, but that was long term gain. And the people who were trying to live long term would trade cigarettes and every, and other things to be able to get you know an extra piece of bread. So they knew when someone didn't get up for work, so they didn't you know strive towards a purpose, and they started going towards immediate gratification, which was a cigarette. They knew it was only twenty four to forty eight hours for that person to live. So long term goals and having those long term goals tied to uh, some sort of societal purpose, whether it's in a work or is in taking care of someone else, to me was the key to the book. Uh, but it's one of those books that's timeless in my opinion just because it, it's very hard to recreate uh, that sort of suffering that those people went through. So I recommend it to everyone. I'll probably read it once a year. Great, amazing book.